And that is the moment that I knew that this platform is absolutely going to work because of the effect that it has on me. As Welcome to Open Innovation. I want us to be able to obtain the open technology that we want without waiting for volunteers to make it for free and without waiting for some company to figure out a business model. There are opportunities that exist to create a massive amount of value for not that much cost. And just looking at the big picture, you would think that this is always going to happen. Anytime it costs very little to produce a whole lot of value, shouldn't that always happen? But it doesn't always happen. And the reason is because sometimes the value capture is very difficult. That means it's hard to turn the part where we want it into the part where somebody can make it. For example, let's look at open source software. Because we can't put it behind a lock and key, when it's good, it's going to be distributed to tons and tons and tons of people. It's going to create a lot of value. But because we can't put it behind a lock and key, it's difficult to convert our demand into action. Among programmers, we have a self-help model. If something is essential for me to get my work done every day, either somebody else has already built it, or I can write the software myself, in theory. But this model doesn't really help the software consumer, somebody who relies on software but isn't a programmer. And to look at why this is such a big problem for the consumer, we have to look first at why B2B open source works. That's about a $30 billion a year market. It's fairly healthy. And the way that it works is a company like Costco needs some improvement to some logistic software that's built on some open source. And they'll hire a company like Red Hat to build the improvements for that software. Now, because Costco is a massive company, they're expecting to capture enough value from what they have to pay Red Hat. It's worth it for Costco. Now, the truth is that most of the value is going to other companies. Costco is only receiving a small part, but Costco has a lot of employees, and so they can capture enough to cover the cost of the further production of the open source that they rely on. But what about the consumer? The consumer has a problem because they have a very small budget, and they also don't expect to capture that much value. So individually, it's just not worth it for them. And over and over and over again, what this has turned into is if you look at an open source technology, if it's used by businesses, it's doing great. And if it's used mainly by consumers, it's suffering. Now, the basic shape of the solution is really simple. You need to gather up more customers until together they capture enough value to cover the cost. And if you get a lot more customers, that just makes it cheaper. It makes the value proposition keep getting better. This is crowdfunding 101. We can't get something if we try to do it ourselves, but if we pull together a bunch of people, we can make it happen quickly and cheaply. If we look at two of the OG models, on the one hand, we've got Kickstarter. They have a threshold model that creates cooperation. But because the creators tend to raise a lot of money and then just disappear, it lacks accountability. It doesn't have any way for us to be sure that we're going to get something. If we look at Patreon and GitHub sponsors, they're month to month, so they can create some accountability, but they don't have any way to create cooperation. They don't have the little progress bar with the funding where we all move at once. So those platforms are designed for content that can be put behind a lock and key, which again, doesn't really work with open source. A big problem that all these first generation tools share is that we're waiting on the creators to decide what they wanna to try to sell to people who don't have that much expertise in what is being financed. So how we're going to fix this in PrizeForge is we're separating the role of the creator from a representative who acts on behalf of the contributors. And this is going to create efficient communication and accountability, and it's going to mean that the community is independent of the creators. They can move around between different creators. That will create even better accountability, and it means that the creators are going to be making what the community wants. On our feature roadmap, of course we want to have multiple delegates, we want to have have multiple streams where we're raising money for different purposes and some of these interests are going to overlap and some of them are going to be very independent. The ability of these many sub-communities to be overlapping or to be completely independent, to join together or to split apart whenever their interests come together or when they need to go their separate ways means that we're always going to have the right people cooperating with the right communities for the things that matter to them. And we're not going to have a winner-take-all situation where somebody can affect the outcome and force other users to pay for something that they don't care about. So the intent of what we're building is to organize in advance streams of funds that are earmarked for a particular purpose, where people have selected representatives who will communicate with creators to get the creators to produce what the community wants. 
And these communities of users are not sensitive to subscription sales models or business models or profitability or chasing after compulsive customers or trying to put ads on everything. They can purely pursue the creation of value. That is a production finance model. We are trying to fund the production of things that we value. Go directly to Park Place. Forget the $200 to get the ball rolling. I put together a prototype of our elastic fund matching. It's two dimensional. We're matching big contributions and small contributions. We're packaging them together a little bit at a time. The thresholds expand and the funds don't become matched until one of the levels hits its threshold. We are creating cooperation a little bit at a time across every single kind of budget because there are businesses who want open source too. There are prosumers and professionals who want open source. Some people want open source a lot and even the smallest contribution can make big things happen. This is just the beginning. Somebody already prepaid $100. They enrolled $25 a week. And if there's nobody there to match it, I get paid nothing. And that is the moment that I knew that this platform is absolutely going to work because of the effect that it has on me as a developer. I am motivated and I am accountable. And there is nothing in my way except I need to work and build out the rest of this platform. Build these features, show progress, make sure that people understand what is a production finance solution. I want to see the year of the Linux desktop, I want to see open LLMs, and I want to see billions of open source users able to create all kinds of cool stuff. It's going to make their lives better, it'll make my life better, we'll fight back against stupid competition, and whenever somebody just wants to focus on creating some value, that's the only thing that they have to do. So now that I've put together a presentation of where we're at and what we're working on, I'm going to go focus on programming. I'm going to ask you to go try out our platform. Go send some marbles through the pipes. We need to find out that all the various little systems work. We need to surface problems early so that we can start getting ready so that when we have more features, we're going to be ready to take on more users. Ask questions. Be curious. Talk to people. Get into our communities and talk about what you expect and talk about what you want. Thanks. Only the future is certain.